moon. In shadow, its surface temperature drops to minus 150 degrees Celsius. In sunlight, it rises to over 100. Virtually at the same distance from the sun, temperatures on Earth are much less extreme. And we owe this life-giving fact to its atmosphere, in particular to the presence of the so-called greenhouse gases. Energy from the sun reaches us in the middle bands of the electromagnetic spectrum as light and heat. To balance this daily income from the sun, Earth radiates energy back, but only in the longer wavelengths of the infrared. But it doesn't all escape back into space. Some of it is absorbed in the lower atmosphere, mainly by water vapor, but also by carbon dioxide. Throughout the long period of man's rise to civilization, this blanket of heat-absorbing gases has kept the average global temperature around 15 degrees Celsius against the moon's minus 20. But in the last 150 years, this balance has been altered. Burn any organic matter and its content of carbon combines with oxygen. Burning a cubic meter of natural gas produces roughly two kilograms of carbon dioxide. A liter of gasoline, two and a half kilos. Burn a ton of coal and you release up to four tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Since 1850, the consumption of these fossil fuels has increased a hundredfold. Add to this the more recent burning of the tropical forests, and the result has been a marked and accelerating increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. What's more, there's been an even sharper increase in other, even more potent greenhouse gases, which absorb energy at different wavelengths, retaining even more heat in the atmosphere. Nitrous oxide and ozone, mainly from traffic. Methane from cattle and rice fields. And new to nature, the CFCs, used as blowing and cleaning agents and refrigerants. These other gases could soon be absorbing as much radiation as carbon dioxide. But has this started to make the Earth warmer? Weather is hard to predict, but records of its past behavior go back a long way. Fertile ground for the revealing eye of the computer. This warming gradually spread to the rest of the Arctic by the 1930s and into the 1940s. And by 1941, the warming has spread across the Arctic and extensively covered most of North America. Region-by-region region analysis of world temperature records shows a small but significant warming trend over the century with a marked increase in the 1980s. It's beginning to spread down to the tropics as well. Yes, it's not just over land areas, it's over ocean areas in the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. Reduced to global averages, it shows a rise of just half a degree Celsius. This could be due to some natural climatic change but it does accord with computer models based on the known atmospheric processes and predicted build-up of the greenhouse gases. These models contain many uncertainties, but they forecast that by 2050, global mean temperature could have increased by at least a degree and a half, possibly near a four. Snow melt there. This may not sound much, but what the computer modelers are looking at is the possibility of change at a rate faster than at any time since the end of the ice age. I think particularly over the ocean here, over the North Pacific... Change too fast, perhaps, for life to adapt without severe dislocation. These uh, mid-latitude regions in the southern hemisphere... What they foresee is not a steady and even warming overall, but alterations to the familiar patterns of climate and the increasing frequency of abnormal weather. No 
two scenarios fully agree. But their strange, mesmerizing images of possible futures have each prompted the same serious warning. A warning endorsed by a uniquely broad consensus of scientists in their report to the United Nations at the end of 1990.